Mark, this is one of the most interesting things that I've seen so far this year at Air Venture. It's the Unpanel from Abolution. Tell us about this innovative approach to avionics. Sure thing. Well, as you know, we've been working on avionics as a software product for some time. And by approaching it as a software problem, it gives us a lot of flexibility to be able to implement new ideas a lot more quickly and to take things from being just concepts to being an actual product way, way faster. The Unpanel is one of our first forays into actually taking that technology and producing something that's never been in the market before from even the perspective of the pilot who doesn't really care about what's happening behind the scenes. And the Unpanel, we sat down with Zenith, who of course has a lot of kit building customers and we said, okay, so Blue Sky, tell us about what you'd like to see. And between the two of us, we came up with different ideas about an approach that took advantage and leveraged all this technology that's available to just dispense with everything that everybody's just inherited about airplanes and said, well, if you could make an ideal interface for this kind of flying, specifically for bush flying and you know, people are just doing VFR stuff, what would it look like? And the Unpanel is a result of that. When you talk about doing things like bush flying, how robust did you feel like you needed to make the hardware to run the software to be in those kinds of environments? Well, making the hardware robust is one thing, but really was more about the instrumentation. So when we look at the kind of flying that people are doing with the bush flying, they're much more critical about the angle of attack. That's really important, uh, your airspeed, your altitude. The things you care about are not the same things that I care about when I'm flying IFR. So we place the instruments that are most important for a VFR pilot right up at the top. Our airspeed, our angle of attack, our altitude, our yaw, and in terms of engine instruments, the most important, of course, is fuel because that's the one that leads to the most accidents, believe it or not. Now, one of the things that we did here is we, we wanted to represent AOA in a way that was meaningful to a pilot. So we actually use words to say, okay, this is kind of a good approach speed, or you're starting to get slow, or you're really approaching a stall. And just make it really clear what we're talking about in terms of angle of attack. Then below that come a, a lot more kind of more generic in, uh, instruments. And then of course you have a moving map. As you can tell, all the text is really, really large because we've got this 17 inch enormous screen. So it wasn't that we've wanted to fill it up and clutter it with more information. Instead, we use the opportunity to make the screen easier to read so that older pilots don't have to wear reading glasses when they're flying around with a system like that. Another thing to keep in mind is because this is a software product, this is an opportunity to say, this is our first pass at this. This is what we think it ought to be. But if it needs to be something different, we have an architecture that makes it much easier to build customized, modified sorts of displays that are different from what we're looking at on normal screens or even on what we've created for the end panel. What are some of the refinements now that as you've got this version one out, what are some of the refinements that the people that are actually flying it are saying, you know, maybe you might want to try this? Gosh, there is a laundry list because, of course, if you ask a dozen pilots to go fly this and what would you change about it, they're all going to have different things, many of them contradictory. Some will like some things and some will, you know, not like them. From our perspective, a lot of what we've been doing these last few years is about building an architecture that supports adding new and innovative ideas. So our architecture is both from a software perspective and from a hardware perspective very modular. So this board, for example, shows off our interface modules. We have one for general purpose I.O. We have modules that talk Air Inc. 429. We have serial. We have electronic circuit breakers that can power servos or turn on and off other devices. And by assembling these pieces together, you can create a system that can talk to different types of avionics devices as long as those vendors are willing to do that. So we talk to MGL, we talk to GRT, we talk to iLevel, we talk to UAvionics, we talk to Trig. Our model is that we're trying to bring in all these different kinds of devices and if somebody comes up with something new, we want to be able to provide a way for them to get that to a much broader audience of pilots and that they don't have to go worry about integrating with every single avionics vendor, they can just integrate with this one software product and then other people can work from there. Are, are the position of the instruments now fixed or is that something that you will in the future allow people to assign what they see on the screen where they want to see it? 
That's a great question. So right now, these are software elements. They're modular, but there's still a piece of software that ties all this together. And we are looking at making it where the positions of all the elements can be adjusted. Right now, you can adjust the size of these gauges, you can adjust the position of a few elements, but not just generically start saying, I want this gauge over here and this other gauge over there. That's probably something that we'll look forward to in the future. Now, the moving map is a separate piece of software from the rest of the display. So we do intend that other software developers could produce their own moving maps that could come back here in case someone wants a different type of moving map. But right now we just supply the one that we put together ourselves. And it's probably worth mentioning that it, we are playing the ship at the very tail end of this year. Mm -hmm. And the uh, cost? The cost will be eleven nine ninety five for the complete package. That is to say the display, mm -hmm. com radio, audio panel, angle of attack sensor, antenna, pre-built wiring harness, mm -hmm. the whole deal for the Zenith CA750 is our current plan. And it's currently exclusive to the CA750, and what plans do you have for other air prods? We're not exclusive to the CA750, but the Zenith is the one that we plan to build a wiring harness for, so we are absolutely open to other aircraft manufacturers that want to incorporate this technology, whether it's the unpanel or other designs. Again, we think about applications that are novel. We can do, if, if somebody has a roadable airplane and they need to have a map that represents roads versus one that's just uh, uh, represents aviation stuff, that's the kind of, the, all those areas where, where the traditional products don't fit, mm -hmm. that, that is uh, our strongest area right there. Well, great. Well, Mark, thanks very much for taking some time and uh, have a good show. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time. Aero TV is brought to you by... Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. We started with a 14-inch longer fuselage, high-end interior finishes, Garmin G3000 flight deck, and a fourth window to give additional natural light to the cabin. We then redesigned the wings and horizontal tail, increasing the wingspan by a full four feet. Welcome to the jet life.